video. This video is going to be about um, my vintage haul of handbags. I've got a box here um, and it's got little handbags in it that I've bought. So I thought I would just share with you um, some of the different styles of handbags that I have and um, just they're my passion and I just thought I would share them. Um, yeah, well, you probably noticed that um, I've only got one picture up here and there's an empty space here. I've not quite done that yet, so I've got another one here um, and I'm going to film that, uh, fill it with um, this little pop print. So yeah, this one was Sam. He um, was my dog who I sadly lost. Um, he, he died last Halloween, which um, for me is quite a big thing because Halloween's my favourite holiday of the year, so it's forever now going to be linked to my little fur baby, Sam. Um, and he really was such a big part of my life, he was just such a character and yeah, I miss him dearly, I really do. So yeah, so I made this little photo frame, little collage, it's got his, the first ever toy that he got when we, when we adopted him, because he was a rescue dog, we rehomed him, um, and he got this little um, Chubblies, um, Rosie was her name, it was like a little sausage dog and he's caught his first collar and his name tag that he never he didn't actually like the name tag so he never actually wore the name tag but we still have it um and some pictures of him the thing about sam was he's quite a strange little dog um a lot of dogs don't like having their collars on rory he's quite happy if you take his collar off in the house he's quite content um it doesn't it doesn't doesn't bother him he, if he gets his collar on he knows he's going out and he's quite happy with that sam Oh, he would be beside himself if you took his collar off to wash it or he, he, he had, you know, a bath um, and we wash the collar and wait for it to dry. He And wait for him to dry as well. He was just beside himself. He wasn't happy until he got his collar back on again. He wouldn't settle. He wasn't content. He'd go up to it, cry, sniff at it. And the minute he got his collar back on, he was quite quick quite content so I know you shouldn't really um, keep collars on dogs in the house in case they catch on anything and um, I've heard some really horrific stories about that but yeah Sam you know, he was just one of these dogs that if you took his collar off you better have another collar to put on because yeah he wouldn't be happy without it on um, so yeah so he was my little darling so yeah so that's Sam um, and I've got space up here to and obviously in the middle there's pictures of Sam and Rory, you won't see Rory, but he's in the very top picture. And then we've got Sam in the bottom picture. And then there's a little saying in the middle. And that's kind of my motto in life is every day someone's going through their, I would actually read the quote. And it said, everyone, everyone you meet is fighting their own battle every day, be kind. Um, and I heard that long, 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 long time ago. And I just printed it and popped it in the photo frame there because it's kind of like my mantra to stick by in life is you don't know um, what kind of experiences people are going through. Um, there's a lot of people who have hidden disabilities that you can't actually see. There's a lot of people with traumas in their life. So there's everyone has something. There's not a person on this planet that doesn't have something going on in their life or who have come through so much and experienced different things in their life. Um, it's part of the human experience, unfortunately, that, you know, we will experience trauma in our life and everyone has different issues that they have to go through. And so, yeah, we don't know that. When we look at other people, it's easy to to just see this happy, smiling person and not realise what trauma that they're actually going through. So, yeah, that's my little quote and that's what's sick by. So, onward to my, ba my bags. So, yeah, so this little one. This is like a little clutch bag. Now, I love vintage handbags um, and I particularly like evening bags, clutch bags, that kind of thing. So, um, take the packaging out. So, this one is actually, it's not vintage. It is a modern one. It's actually by, well, hmm, it's not new. It's not a new bag. Um, it's maybe, it's like kind of from the 80s. Um, it's actually an Oasis bag um, from the kind of early 90s I would think um, but yeah so it's got a, got a strap a little treat a little chain um, a little pocket inside for your mirror or something else but yeah it's got nice and roomy that's what I like I can get my handbag get it I can get my phone in there um, and all my other little bits and pieces tissues pen um, 
cash. Um, not that I really have cash, ca carry cash about, but anyway. But I like the, the little opening on it. So it's a nice little catch. Not a big catch, not a little catch, but yeah, so it's a nice little clutch bag or just carry it in your hand. Um, and I just, I like the colour of it because it's a nice neutral kind of colour. Um, it looks a lot more shiny on screen than it actually is in real life. It's textured fabric. Um, it looks kind of like a sort of, I don't know. It definitely looks a lot shinier on screen than it is in real life. It's not, it's not that vibrant. Um, but yeah, no, I really like that. And it's just, it's, it's a perfect size for me to, to carry all my bits and pieces in. So that's a good one. Um, what's next? What's next? Oh, this is lovely. I like this little one. I buy most of my bags on um, Etsy or eBay. Um, if I'm anywhere that sells vintage clothing or anything like that. But yeah, so a lot of these have either come from eBay or Etsy. So this just simple little black clutch. And again, it's got the little slit in here to put in your makeup mirror. And it has nice little embroidery detail, very delicate embroidery detail at the very top. And it's just got the little standard clasp opening. There's no label in this bag, so I'm not actually sure. Um, when I did, when I bought it, they did say that it was um, vintage 1940s, but there's nothing to really kind of indicate if that that's true. But I like the bag, um, and it sort of it fits with my kind of whole ethos of the kind of style of clothing that I like. And this is a, this is kind of perfect little sort of just simple little bag. I can get my phone in here, so that's a goodie. Um, but you can't get much else in it when I've got my phone in there. So sometimes I'll maybe just put everything in my bag and carry my phone separately. Um, there is a little tiny bit of damage on the bottom. Well, it's not really damage. It's just a little bit of puckering down at the bottom, but no one will see that. So yeah, so that is, that's a cutie, like that. Now this one is very shiny. It's very kind of almost lurixy, I would say. Um, Again, it's got the the straw, uh, the the chain handle. So the good thing about this is you can actually have it longer, or you can have shorter handles. Like it's a little sort of carry bag, and you, indeed you can tuck the chain inside and just have it as a simple little envelope clutch. Um, so yeah, so it's got like a kind of bow, det bow detail on the front. It's a very small bag, ideal for a night out. Um, Again, it's got the little pocket in, on the inside and it's actually by a brand called Debonair and Bowie is the name of the bag, um, made in Hong Kong. Like a lot of these bags that have, they're actually, that's where they're made, they're made in Hong Kong. Um, so not China or um, like a lot more modern bags. So it does kind of show that it's, it is more vintage than modern bags. So I've got two more. One is um, very much, this one is a retro style bag, vintage style I would say, um, but it is a modern bag, but it's done in that very vintage, classic vintage style. Um, I just love it. I love these kind of little, I showed in an earlier video, I showed my favourite bag at the moment and it's, it's the, the sort of circle one and it had the, the moon shaped handle, um, the flapper style one, love, absolutely love that. But yeah, like I say, this is actually, it's a Miss Selfridge bag, but the the chain on this one is fixed, so it's on the outside. You can you can pop the chain in, but um, it doesn't close quite the same as some of the. Don't have one down here. It has the same style of handle, but um, a lot of the older ones. This particular part here is a fold, so the metal folds like a, it's on a hinge, so you can tuck the the chain inside the bag and you don't see the chain. But like I say, you can put it in, but it does leave a tiny little gap because um, it's not really designed to do that. But yeah, I just like it. It's a lot of glass beads and sequins and very glitzy. Very cute. Just my kind of thing. And the final bag that I've actually got here is, this one's from the 80s. Um, and I can never pronounce the name of this brand. And I tried earlier to pronounce the name of the bag. And 
few times I got it right and then I got it wrong, so I'm not even going to try now. So yeah, so the, it's in the original packaging, which is a bit beat up, um, because it is very, very vintage. So, um, I can't really read the writing on the back, but yeah, it's made in Japan. So, here we go. So, this is the bag. So, it's got little, like, sort of crescent shapes. Looks like birds on screen, but it's actually like little crescent shapes. Um, which will packaging inside, vintage packaging. And the inside of the bag itself is actually looks immaculate in the inside. But I think what's happened with this is it's actually sat in the box and it's been somewhere that's gotten damp. And um, you can see there's staining on it. It's not the staining isn't as visible in real life as it is on screen. It's, it's coming out a lot more on screen. And it's got little tangy rust marks on it as well, dotted about. So I'm a bit apprehensive to try and clean that. I want to kind of revive it, but um, I don't want to damage it further. So I'm a bit apprehensive about that. This bit is actually a little pocket at the top, this part here. There's a little pocket there. And you've gotten your three sections on the inside. And the brand is, <laughs> you have to forgive me for this, Shishido. Now, I... I I can't pronounce that properly. I know I'm not pronouncing it right, but it's S H I S E I D O. So to me, I'm reading it as Shishido, but um, I'm not 100%. I don't think that's the right way to pronounce it. And it's got a little pocket on the front part as well. So yeah, I like this little clutch. Um, it actually makes a good like purse, um, as we call it in the UK. Wallet Americans would probably call it, but it does make a, a nice little purse. But um, this one's definitely from the 80s. Um, Shishido was quite a good brand back then, and still is, um, but I think it was more popular back then. So yeah, so that's um, all my little vintage haul for today. Um, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure how to clean this. I really, I don't want to cause any damage. I think I'll do a little bit of research on how to try and to clean that up. But um, it's definitely, because it's got kind of like a water stain on the, the side of the packaging, so it's definitely gotten damp. Um, and because it's, it's like I say, it's still in the original box and I think that's how it's got the damage on it that it does. Apart from the markings on it, the, the purse doesn't have any sign of wear or any, you know, tears or anything on it. Um, it's just, it's obviously got, um, been somewhere down per. And that's why it's got its marks on it, so that's a bit of a shame. But yeah, if I can clean it up, get that cleaned up, that would be brilliant. I would be quite happy at that. Um, but if not, it's one of these things that I'll just keep because it's a vintage bag. Um, so yeah, so that's all my sort of latest little collection of bags. Um, so I just want to say thank you again. Thank you for um, coming back to my channel. Thank you for coming back to watch another video. If you like it um, and you want to see more videos, leave me a comment. Let me know what kind of thing you would like to see. Um, I have a lot of shoes. In fact, I have a pair of my... I don't know how to do this, but <laughs> you might not see them very well. I might take a picture and um, insert the picture. Um, I love irregular choice shoes. Um, although lately I've kind of gone off them a little bit, um, but I've got a lot of them. Um, and Ruby Shoe, that's another brand. I've got other brands, Iron Fist, and there's a few other brands that I have. But yeah, the, those are my two favourite ones, is the irregular choice and the Ruby Shoe. Ruby Shoe is more practical. Their styles are a bit more toned down. Um, they're more kind of everyday shoes, but um, a regular choice shoes can be pretty wild. Um, they have a lot of wild designs, but yeah, I love them. So yeah, so thank you. If there's anything you want to let me know or chat to me about, just feel free to um, drop it in the comments and I'll get back to you. I will reply to all my comments. And if you would do me a favor and just like and subscribe, that would be fabulous. And that's it. Okay, bye.